This video continues with our algebraic manipulations of trigonometric functions. Now we're going to talk about fractions. We'll simplify complex fractions, we'll multiply and divide fractions, as well as add and subtract fractions. Alright, if I give you something like this, 5 divided by 1 over x plus 1 over y. In order to simplify complex fractions, we need to find the LCD of all the fractions. In this case, the LCD is simply x times y. I have a denominator of x and a denominator of y, and my LCD would be x times y. Now I need to multiply my numerator and my denominator by that LCD. I'm multiplying my numerator by x times y and my denominator by x times y. So my numerator is 5xy, and denominator, if I multiply xy times 1 over x, that leaves behind a y, and multiplying x times y by 1 over y, I get x. And I usually alphabetize my variables, so I would write this as 5xy divided by x plus y. And remember, even if you're tempted to try to cancel out those y's, remember, you can only reduce factors. You cannot reduce terms. If there's a plus sign there, you're stuck. So our final answer is 5xy divided by x plus y. Okay, well why have I bothered with this? Let's look at something such as cotangent of negative theta divided by cosecant of negative theta. Now before I talk about converting these to sines and cosines, I want to take care of that negation sign. If I go back to my even odd functions, I remember those identities told me that the cotangent of a negative angle is equal to negative that cotangent of the positive angle. Likewise, cosecant of negative x was equal to negative cosecant of positive x. So knowing that, I rewrite cotangent of negative theta as negative cotangent of theta, and cosecant of negative theta as negative cosecant theta, and then I can divide my negative 1 out of my numerator and denominator, and I end up with cotangent theta over cosecant theta. Now I'm going to have to look at my ratio identities. That cotangent of an angle is equal to cosine of an angle divided by sine of the angle. So I'll rewrite my cotangent of theta as cosine theta divided by sine theta. Now that I've taken care of the cotangent, I need to take care of the cosecant. The cosecant of an angle, if I go back now to my reciprocal identity, the cosecant of an angle is 1 over the sine of that angle. So I'll rewrite cosecant of theta as 1 over sine theta. Now to get rid of this complex fraction, that is a fraction within a fraction, I'll find my LCD, which happens to just be sine of theta, and I'll multiply my numerator and denominator by that LCD. If I multiply cosine of theta divided by sine theta by sine theta, and if I multiply 1 over sine theta by sine theta, I end up with cosine theta over 1, or simply cosine of theta. So what we started at, that cotangent of negative theta divided by cosecant of negative theta, that simplifies down to a simple cosine of theta. In order to multiply fractions, all I do is multiply my numerators and multiply my denominators. Before I do that, though, I usually look for things that I can pre-simplify. And if I look here, I see a x in the numerator and x in the denominator, and I'll divide those out, and that leaves behind a 1. And I also see a y I can get rid of in the numerator, and when I divide a y out of the y squared, that leaves behind a y. And to multiply, I just, again, multiply my numerators and my denominators, and I get 3 times 7, or 21, divided by 4y. Alright, dividing fractions. To divide fractions, we're going to multiply the reciprocal of the divisor. So here I have 7x divided by 8, divided by 1 over 2x, and I'm going to rewrite that as a multiplication of the reciprocal of the divisor. And that means we have 7x divided by 8 times 2x over 1. Again, I can pre-simplify, I can get rid of a factor of 2 in my numerator and denominator, then multiply across, and I end up with 7x squared divided by 4. Well, this looks a lot more complex, but it's going to follow the same rules. First of all, I'm going to rewrite this as a multiplication problem. So instead of dividing by 3 tan cubed divided by secant of x, I'm going to rewrite this as tan squared x over secant x 
times secant x over 3 tan to the third x. Now, always before, I've taken care of my tangents and secants and turned them into sines and cosines, but I don't think I'm going to do that here because if I'm looking at this, I see, for instance, I can just divide a secant out of my numerator and denominator. Rather than converting that to a cosine, I can just take care of that right here. And the same goes for the tangent. I see that I have a tangent squared in my numerator and a tangent cubed in my denominator. Well, I can divide both of those by tangent squared, and then my final fraction works out to be 1 over 3 tangent of x. I can leave it like this. I could also rewrite it in terms of sine and cosine, but it really doesn't offer me anything because I won't be able to simplify this any more than I have it. So that's my final answer. Lastly, we're about to talk about adding and subtracting fractions. To add fractions or subtract fractions, we need to first get an LCD, a least common denominator, and then we need to rewrite these fractions as equivalent fractions with that LCD in the denominator. So for instance, if I have this problem here, my denominators are 3x squared and 5y, well my LCD is going to be 3x squared times 5y, or if I multiply that all together, 15x squared y. I would rewrite each fraction as an equivalent fraction with that in my denominator. So I'd multiply the numerator and the denominator of my first term by 5y, and I'd multiply the numerator and denominator of my second term by 3x squared. And when I do that, I end up with 10y plus 3x cubed divided by 15x squared y. And if I give you a problem in trigonometry, I'll do the exact same thing. We're going to need to find the LCD, and we're going to have to rewrite these fractions as equivalent fractions with that LCD in the denominator. Looking at this problem, it looks like my LCD is going to have to be sine x minus cosine x, all multiplying sine x plus cosine x. And if I went ahead and multiplied that out, that works out to be sine squared x minus cosine squared x. So let's rewrite these two fractions as equivalent fractions. All right, this is looking pretty complex. Well, on my first term, I needed to multiply the numerator and denominator by sine x plus cosine x. And in my second term, I needed to multiply that by sine x minus cosine x. So if I do that, and now I go ahead and subtract my numerators, notice I'm dealing with a subtraction problem here, I have all my numerator, 2 sine x plus cosine x minus 3 times sine x minus cosine x, all divided by my LCD. Now if I use the distributive property, keep in mind I have to be careful with that minus 3. Remember minus 3 times sine x would be negative 3 sine x, and then I have the negative 3 times negative cosine x, that works out to be positive cosine x. And now if I combine like terms, my final answer is negative sine x plus cosine x divided by sine squared x minus cosine squared x. Again, although it looks awfully tempting to change that sine squared x minus cosine squared x to 1 or negative 1, remember that Pythagorean identity only works if I have sine squared x plus cosine squared x. And now we've gone through dealing with fractions with algebraic manipulations of trigonometric functions.